Simon Rainier, Link Saramasada out of Kamloops, British Columbia. Self-defense is something that's very near and dear to my heart. Um, I have a strong background in self-defense. I taught it many, many times to quite a few people. Uh, and it's something that, as much as I don't teach it as much anymore, I do still kind of throw in a little bit uh, with any of my teaching. A lot of times what comes up is, is historical European martial arts good for self-defense? And the general consensus is usually yes, with a litany of caveats and conditions. So, let's dive into that just a little bit. First off, when it comes to swords for self-defense. Swords are not necessarily a good option these days. Historically, absolutely. Uh, Fiori's Manual, Flower of Battle, there's a strong self-defense component in it. There's techniques covered for um, dagger against unarmed, dagger against stick, sword against dagger, dagger against sword, stick against spear, all kinds of stuff in there that are really not applicable to, say, a judicial duel where everyone would be armed at least more or less equally, or a battlefield situation, which um, Fiore doesn't talk a whole lot about sort of any kind of group melee action. So we can kind of throw that aside and, and, and see that it is sort of, you're walking down the street and you get in a fight, what do you, what do, you do from there? Um, a lot of the manuals are like that. You look at the rapier manuals, and the rapier manuals uh, specifically call out self-defense, Capifero. Uh, says um, fencing is defense with a sword. So, absolutely, historically, the problem we want run into in modern times is the sword is not a weapon that we see a lot of. If someone has a gun, a gun, if they aren't feared, they are at the very least respected or should be. Uh, so it can, in theory, act as a deterrent. Now, my personal self-defense philosophy is never use a weapon as a deterrent. It is just as likely to be an escalator, and so we always want to go to de-escalate, and a weapon is not going to do that. If you pull out a weapon in a self-defense situation, you should be absolutely 100% trained to use it and ready to use it. A weapon you are not trained to use and ready to use instantly belongs to the guy. You pull out a weapon and you're not ready to use it, you might as well hand it to him because he's going to end up with it anyway. So, when it comes to swords, they can be, have the potential to be extremely lethal weapons. Um, you pull it out, you're going to have to use it, especially since my experience in the modern times is that people have absolutely no idea what swords can do and absolutely no respect for them. Swords to people are things you see in movies, they're toys, they're not weapons. Uh, prime, prime example of that is just a couple of weeks ago I was doing our sparring in the park and these two guys came up walking like pretty much right through us uh, as we were fighting and had no fear of it. One of the guys that was passing said, watch out or I'll take it away from you and hit you with it. It's like, okay, but I'm swinging it around my head and you're walking through and you're expecting not to get hit and I clearly have no, no fear of this. So, And I think that's very representative of the attitudes of people as a whole. Anytime we're out sparring in public, I always, always, always make a point to remind people that like, hey, three feet of steel are swinging around, it's going to hurt if you get hit with it, watch out for bystanders because people will huh? lean in right close to you, um, see what you're doing, and have absolutely no consideration for whether or not they're being hit. So, swords, not respected. Don't get it, but there you go. Um, pulling out a sword in a street altercation, they're probably going to laugh at you and then try to take it away from you. So you're stuck in a situation where you have to then deliver, at the very least, crippling or in some way debilitating blow with a sword, which is, by the way, illegal. Generally speaking, there's very, very few circumstances where using a sword would be justified in a modern self-defense situation. Uh, technically speaking, I believe you can carry swords in Canada as long as you have a reason besides 
self-defense. Weapons laws are defined in large part by intent. You say, I'm going somewhere dangerous, so I'm carrying a sword. It's a weapon, it's illegal. You say, I'm going to training, I'm going to my class, possibly even it's a fashion accessory. It's fine. You can, you can carry it. Um, officer's discretion is a thing, though, so they might take it away from you anyway, but you're not going to get arrested, which is cool. Um, so, swords, not viable self-defense. One, one slight exception to that is something like this, which is the cold steel uh, gladius machete. It's kind of a sword, really more of a machete. Um, it's sort of modern and scary enough looking that, that it maybe will act as a deterrent. Again, though, I do not like the idea of weapons as a deterrent. I understand there are different views on this, and if you pull out a weapon, being prepared to use it, and the other guy does run away, cool. Bonus. Um, but don't be surprised if it goes horribly hard later on. Um, so, sword's not a great option for self-defense. For all the previous mention reasons. Um, historically European martial arts as well covers things like stick fighting, grappling, dagger work. Those absolutely have a place in modern self-defense. Um, important to kind of pay attention to as well though is it's not what you train, it's how you train. I used to, to spar with a guy uh, back in my Kung Fu days, who, who his training was in traditional Tai Chi, and he was an excellent, excellent fighter. Lots of fun to fight with, but that's because he trained for it. Uh, he trained for fighting. Most people who do Tai Chi, for example, don't. If you're not training competitively and compatibly, it doesn't matter what you do, it's not going to be effective. Same thing with Hima, the grappling stuff we do. It has to be trained in such a way that can be brought to an actual competitive situation, let's call it. Um, a lot of the, the grappling you do when you're first beginning is very compliant, and the, the trap some people fall into is they maintain that compliance throughout the training. Everything works against someone who's letting you do it. So make sure you're doing free play, free grappling, um, the nice thing about grappling, as opposed to, say, boxing, is it's a lot easier to do with free play without causing serious damage to your opponent. Fiore, again, has a point he makes in the grappling section where there's two times you use grappling. You use it in a life or death situation when you're fighting someone, or you use it for fun. Wrestling is fun. Martial arts is fun. That's honestly why we do it. Um, we don't train, those of us who are, are, I think, intellectually honest enough to admit it, we don't train so we can go out and win street fights. Generally speaking, people who know how to fight don't get in fights, partially because we know how quickly it can go wrong, but we train because it's fun to fight. Uh, humans are, by their very nature, a violent species, I feel. Uh, controlled, competitive violence is, is, I think, healthy for us. So, can you use this stuff for self-defense? Under the common definition of yes. Uh, personally, I call martial arts and self-defense two very different things. Uh, there are a lot of crossovers, but if you're training for martial arts, it's different from training for self-defense. It's like practicing football and practicing basketball. There's a lot of crossover skills, teamwork, throwing the ball around, that's honestly about the extent of my sports knowledge. It's crossovers, but you don't train at one to become good at the other. So if you're interested in self-defense, find a good self-defense instructor. Um, someone who's going to talk about things like de-escalation, super important, how to be aware of your situation, how to avoid these conflicts. Martial arts is what you use when self-defense fails. Um, if you want to train in the martial arts, cool. If you want to train in self-defense, cool. Whatever makes you happy. I personally think uh, a degree of martial arts or self-defense training should be required. I think everyone should know how to throw a punch and maybe apply and escape simple locks and takedowns and that kind of thing. Um, worth 
and I, I, I think that should be taught in school, uh, part of the PE curriculum. Um, you should feel confident enough to know that you can protect yourself uh, just a little bit. Um, it's a valuable life skill, call it. Uh, there, there's an argument of, just kind of as a, a brief rant aside, um, I shouldn't have to learn to protect myself. I should, the other person should know not to, not to hurt me. I, I fundamentally kind of agree with that, except that it always seems to be framed as an either or, and it should be both. Um, teach people about bodily autonomy, consent, that kind of things. Yes, absolutely, 100%. As a society, we need to step that up. Also, bad people are going to do bad shit. You should know how to protect yourself when they do. So, training for self-defense, 90% of it should be what happens before the physical altercation. Training for martial arts, that's the physical altercation part. Uh, both are incredibly useful, both are incredibly fun, I think. Um, so, if you're going to try to use HEMA for self-defense, make sure you're training HEMA for self-defense. Practice scenarios, role play, that kind of thing. I'm starting to ramble, so I'm going to wrap it up now. Um, HEMA is a valid style for our modern obsession with street effectiveness, I guess. Um, I really don't like that that's kind of the, the arbiter of of martial arts is, does it work on the street? Because that's kind of macho bullshit, but that's all right. Um, yeah, that's all for now. Bye.